Hello again, Nomad Brad coming to you from my box truck. And today we're gonna to be doing something very exciting. Check it out. So here's how the box truck is looking today. And what we're gonna end up doing is installing a mini split, a ductless mini split heat pump. It will provide cooling and heating for the box truck. The mini split is gonna get mounted right down here. And I'm gonna build a platform that rises up off the steel bumper. And then the mini split has little brackets with it that hang off the back wall. This platform on the bottom is gonna just be kind of a brace because I don't want the whole, the mini split, the outdoor unit weighs 70 pounds and I don't want that whole 70 pounds just hanging off my door um, while I'm bumping and driving around. And then that way the 70 pounds from the mini split is actually being supported by my steel bumper, not supported by the roll up door. This is where I have all the parts uh, sitting, waiting for today's job. Say hi chickens. <clears throat> this is a piece of Unistra. It's one and five eighths by, I think this is 10 feet long. And so this is pretty heavy steel. This is what I'm gonna use to build the little platform for my mini split to sit on. And then here is the mini split itself. This is the head unit. These are the wall brackets. That's the main uh, outdoor unit. And then that box next to it, that's the copper lines and the drain line. When you're doing a mini split, you basically have two options. The copper lines, the refrigerant lines, that's really the only thing that's, uh, that requires special tools and skills. Just to buy the tools to actually install a regular mini split, um, you know, it's gonna, you're gonna spend about probably three or 400 bucks if you get the cheap ones on Amazon. And the basic uh, one ton mini split, you can get them for about eight or 900 bucks but by the time you add the three or $400 for all the extra tools to install the refrigerant lines that you're only gonna use once, it's gonna end up costing you like 13 or 1400 bucks. And so this mini split was 1300 bucks. And so it's a little more than the other regular mini splits, but you don't need any of the tools and it should be a lot faster and just simpler to install. So that's why I went ahead and went with the DIY style. It has really good reviews. I've never worked with one before, so we're gonna go ahead and try it out today. I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting, measuring, and then cutting this up uh, and build the frame. So here's the completed frame. Got it all set, ready to go. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is I wanna paint this piece uh, not attached to the bumper. So I'm gonna use first this 3M scuff pad just to kind of go over and scuff everything up really well. And then I'm gonna start painting it uh, with this Rust-Oleum truck bed coating. So here we are, day two. I got the frame, I'll paint it up. I let it sit overnight with the uh, Rust-Oleum bed liner on it. So it's all ready to go, ready to mount up. And also the first thing I did this morning is I went ahead and just painted the rear bumper uh, with the same Rust-Oleum bed coating. Here it is. The frame is mounted in place on the bumper, ready to go. It is freestanding. Turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. So you can see right here, I got one, two, three bolts and they're going right through those factory holes uh, in the bumper. And I have a washer and a bolt on the backside sticking up in, and then this is tightened down. So uh, yeah. Pretty solid, I like how it turned out. So now the next step is I gotta get the L bracket, the uh, the wall brackets for the AC and get those set up into place. Got the bracket all mounted up in place. 
So the setup here, uh, this little frame that I built is gonna carry most of the weight of the mini split rather than traditionally all the weight would be pulling on these brackets and then basically pulling on my roll-up door, which I cut a big hole out of anyway to add the entry door. So I know the roll-up door isn't super structurally strong. So I didn't want to have, you know, 80 pounds hanging off pulling on that door. So with this uh, frame here and then the brackets resting on the frame, then all the weight from the mini split should transfer down right onto this guy. So now, and then I went ahead and drilled a hole down here uh, for my electrical. It's a 12 gauge, three conductor wire is what you use for this mini split. So uh, I just drilled a big hole right through and I wanted to do that before I mounted the unit because once you mount the unit, then I'm not really gonna have access to, you know, this back wall very easily. So the, uh, the unit has some little vibration, anti-vibration feet that come with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide those in. Boom, like that. All right. One here. So I got the uh, the bolts in, these little rubber uh, vibration, anti-vibration pads set up, and uh, you can see underneath how it's bolted. I put a locking uh, nut on, so that one's bolted on, ready to go. So it looks really good. If I try to shake it, it doesn't, it doesn't move too much. It feels really secure, really solid, and uh, it's got plenty of space here between the back of the unit and the wall for airflow and uh, super, you know unobstructed. So it looks really good. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole up top for the copper lines. So that's it. This is the final tally of how thick my door is. That's the outside uh, siding, the OSB underlayment, one inch polystyrene that I installed. This core right here, this is the factory roll-up door. And then this piece here, this is the inside uh, half inch plywood that I installed myself over the factory roll-up door. Altogether, three and a quarter. Three and a quarter inches is how thick the, uh, the rear wall is. Pretty beefy. I'm gonna open up the refrigerant line kit, check this out. So here's everything that was inside. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna feed the refrigerant lines from the inside out. All right, so the next move is, you just gotta connect up these, uh, these lines here. Okay, so everything is threaded on just hand tight. So you use two wrenches, one here, one here. Uh, this wrench, you don't, you don't turn it, but what you're doing is you're just holding and basically immobilizing the valve. So when you, when you tighten with this side, it doesn't uh, twist and put pressure on this valve. All right, that's pretty tight. Okay, so that feels really tight. And then here is the uh, communication line. This connects to the indoor head unit. So that one just uh, plugs in right here. And then this guy plugs in to here like that.
I got the communication wire clipped in. Now I'm uh, attaching the high voltage. So this is black. Black connects to the L terminal. Uh, it stands for line. It's your line voltage. So we'll do this one first. In fact, you know what? I think I'm gonna put some terminals on here just to be safe. Uh, these ring terminals to the end of my lines just to give me a little better connection. And, uh, and yeah, that's the plan. So, so we'll go like this. You can see the two lines going up inside this little waterproof cover here and then if we look inside one of these was the uh, quick connector which connects to the indoor uh, head unit and then the other ones we did <clears throat> are these three lines right here this is neutral uh, line which is the black wire neutral is the white and then green is the ground so I went ahead and connected those up as well so now the unit has high voltage and low voltage power so we're all connected up in here I'm really confident in that so we're gonna go ahead and close this up and attach that secure that back and then we're gonna go inside and continue with the indoor unit up top here up above the bed uh, this is where the uh, indoor unit's gonna go so it's gonna mount to that sheet of plywood I built this little platform uh, the other day and so you can see uh, I made out of two by made out of two by twos little plywood face on it and so that's screwed into the uh, wood supports on the back and then it's screwed down into this plywood on the bottom so it's very rigid it'll provide a nice mounting surface for the indoor unit and so if we stand back and look at it it looks like it's off-center and so what I'm doing is I'm going to put a closet on the left hand side and so this mini split will actually be centered in the opening space. So the closet's going to take up, you know, about a quarter of the space up there and then the mini split will be centered in the space that's open. It's getting laid out, sun's going down, it's getting dark in the van, but here's a look at the inside. Uh, so I got the line set, this, that's you can see the indoor. Uh, flange there around all the lines running across the top and I just used a, a little eyelet zip tie to connect uh, to screw it and secure it to the top of that wood so it runs all the way across there up and over I thought I was recording this but I don't know what happened it didn't record so I'm kind of going back and giving you guys a little review of what I did um so there's the line set and then there's the, I have the mounting bracket installed, uh, which is what this head unit is going to attach to. Here we go, snapped into place. Refrigerant lines, I got a little bit of extra, so I'm gonna coil it up, spool it up a little bit, but that's ready to go. That looks really good. system uh, the drains coming out the right side here and then I just drilled the hole right down through and I'll take you outside and show you what that looks like but I ran it right next to the wiring for my LED light bar so this is my LED light bar wiring this is my drain line and uh, ultimately this will all be kind of finished off with some cabinets and storage so this will all be covered up you won't see any of that all right so here's the drain line up there up top that's where it comes down you can see the white drain line in the front the brown uh led light bar power in the back and so i went ahead and ran the flexible line that is included with the mini split and i just ran it inside of a three-quarter pvc pipe so this pipe right here is three-quarter pvc the drain line fit inside snugly um so i did the rigid pipe just to kind of help with uh, 
you know, since it's going to be on the outside while I'm driving and stuff, the rigid pipe just helps keep everything in place and keep it from flopping around so it runs all the way down. And then it drips out right there. You just saw a drop fall down. So that's it. And then what I did is I used these zip tie bases. These are just sticky uh, zip tie bases. And so you can, I stuck those to the outside of the van, used a zip tie to suck the uh, pipe right up against it. And so that gives you a really secure hold on the drain line. So that's it, that's the drain line. Cool. Okay. And then see the indoor unit has that little temperature gauge on it. One thing I wanted to mention that's really cool is this one, if you push the display button, keep an eye on that uh, illuminated LED number up there. It goes off. So at nighttime when you're sleeping, you can turn it off and you won't have this annoying uh, colored light. That should be it, I think. I don't hear nothing happening. I do hear something. It is on. It's just quiet. It's quiet as hell. Oh my goodness. This thing is so quiet. I can't believe. Yeah, I can feel the compressor running. That is incredible, guys. You don't even understand how quiet this thing is. I'm just going to shut up for a minute. See if you can hear this. I'm going to go ahead and throw some more leak bubbles on and uh, we're going to check it out. Just make sure no more, no leaks. I think we're good though. Honestly, these fittings are really, really nice. I'm really happy with how easy this, uh, these copper lines are without having to use a vacuum pump or a, you know, gauge set and all that crap. You just plug them in, connect them, boom, you're done, game over. This is super user friendly. Man, this is really, really exciting. After being in a van for five years, last year was the first year I actually had an air conditioner, um, but I just got one of the regular window style units and I mounted it up in the corner of my last box truck and it was super loud. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, it was the advanced model. It had the inverter style uh, compressor, so it wasn't as bad, but it was still pretty loud. It was like, I mean, you knew it was on and it was the one ton unit and it still got pretty hot in here. Like not pretty hot, but it still wasn't as comfortable as it could have been. So I'm so amazed by how quiet this thing is and the air feels really good. I'm excited to see uh, what it does this summer when I'm sitting here in the Texas heat, how it keeps the temps down. But I feel really, really good about it. Really stoked about this AC.